ask of you one thing that we desire that as we worship you Lord come and change our lives so rise 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 arise arise take your place be enthroned people do we have out there tonight? <laughs> Sing this with me. We lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up on our praises. Yeah. We lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up on our praises. Come on. We lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up on our praises. Sure that the audio is okay. Reduce Alleluia. 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 music. Be enthroned on the praises of your people. <laughs> yes. A media personnel, please confirm that you have the audio music very low. Okay, you are all welcome. You are all welcome to this very important program. I want my media personnel to confirm that you have the audio in your system. Okay, Media One has confirmed. Brother, are you getting my signal? Well enough?
Ini tuh mulai awal. One, two, one, two. Confirming the microphone. One, two, three, four. Hello. 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 One, two, three, four. This mic is good. Please confirm that mic and then let's get rolling. Hello. Hello. Okay. Hello. 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 I think it's okay now. Bring it. It's okay now. Okay. Hello. It's okay. Okay, you are all. Let's go. Take rolling action. You are all welcome to this program. My name is Isang Isang Doakaga. We have a Christian Muslim dialogue, a peaceful, friendly, an intellectual Christian Muslim debate today. And I'm your moderator for the day. The purpose of this program is to promote interfaith friendship, peaceful coexistence, and uh, seeking to understand each other's faith. And you will all agree with me that Christian Muslim dialogue is something that we need. Those of us who have been engaging in this for a long time would testify that the program has always been peaceful and friendly and promoting a good relationship, good neighborliness between the Christians and the Muslims. And we want to continue in such a program so that we can enlighten those who believe that Christians and Muslims cannot sit down together and have a dialogue. The venue of this program is holding at the New Anointing Deliverance Church, 13 Balogo Street, Anifooshe, Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria. And we want to thank the leaders of this particular church for inviting us and asking us to use their facility to hold a program between the Christians and Muslims. And we want to encourage other churches to feel free, open your doors, and allow us to show you that interfaith dialogue is a tool for promoting peaceful coexistence. The topic for today's discussion is the way of salvation. The way of salvation. I will first of all invite the timekeepers for the program before I talk about the, the speakers. I will invite the, I will introduce the Christian speaker, and I think we have an officer who is going to introduce the Muslim speaker. But the timekeeper for the Christian is Reverend David Adeshino. So please. Welcome him. This is the seat for the timekeeper. And I want to invite the timekeeper for the Muslim, Brother Said and Yodoku. Please have your seat. It's important to have the timekeepers because there is a, a, a rules. And they will help us to enforce the rules, the modalities for the debate. Before I read the modalities for the debate, we will invite the two speakers to be on seat. And when the two speakers are on seat, we will say the opening prayer from both sides. And then we will we, we'll, um, go into the modalities and going to the program properly. And so the Muslim, the Christian speaker, I will introduce him first. He is a visitor 
an evangelist, and he's a pharmacist by profession. He's coming all the way from Uganda in East Africa. A very wonderful man of God. He loves the Lord and is very passionate for the things of the kingdom. Incidentally, he's a, he's a Christian, formerly a Muslim. Please join me to welcome, to take his seat over here, evangelist Umar Mustafa Nyazi. Do you need that light? All right, you are welcome. I will invite, I think um, he used, the Muslim speaker usually has someone to introduce him, or should I introduce you? Okay, thank you very much for the privilege to introduce the Muslim preacher. They usually introduce him in a very special way, and I, will, I, I have been privileged to listen to how they normally introduce him. And so, I don't want to break that protocol. I want to introduce to you the Muslim speaker for the day. Al-Ustaz, Al-Imam, Al-Sheikh, Muhammad, Jamu, Adegunwa, Baba Loye Kupo, the doctor of Bible and Quran, a.k.a. Olotu, a Jagrimo Keferi of Africa, a Jagrimo Keferi of Nigeria, Baba Christi Tobi, Jesus Adegunwa, Ustas, Jamu Adegunwa, you are welcome representing the Muslims for today. Wonderful. Now I'm going to invite for the Christian opening prayer. He will. Another brother. He also is a visitor all the way from Uganda, East Africa, and he's going to lead as the Christian uh, preacher who will give us the opening prayer. Join me to welcome Brother Joseph Chibirige from Uganda, East Africa. So just come straight up and... And lead us in the opening prayer for the Christians. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Uh, we are going to pray, but before we can pray, when Christ was going to heaven, in the book of John, chapter 6, and verse 63, he said these words. He said, for the spirit is life. And when he came to John chapter 16, verse 7, he said, It is good that I go. If I do not go, the comforter will not come. But when he comes, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. The comforter to us is the Holy Spirit. We are going to call upon the Holy Spirit to be in our midst as this dialogue goes on. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this opportunity you have granted us to say these words to your people, Lord. It is that you came to save the world. We pray that may your Holy Spirit descend upon us, mighty King of glory. As we pray, Dialogue with our friends, the Muslims. We pray that may your Holy Spirit, that you said will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment, come into, your, into our presence, Lord, 
so that every person in this place may be touched by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. We call upon your Holy Spirit to touch every person that is going to step this podium, Lord. We pray that you transform every person who has come into this debate for the glory of your throne to be manifested in our midst, Lord. We dedicate every person in this place, Lord, into your hands, mighty King of glory. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we dedicate Umar Nyanzi and the Muslim debater into your hands, Father. Come and use them, Lord. Use Umar as your weapon, Heavenly Father. You say that no weapon raised against us shall prevail, Lord. Use this gentleman to preach your word, Heavenly Father. May you anoint this, Lord. May your anointing touch every person who has come to listen, Lord. May you convict every person of sin, righteousness, and judgment, Lord. We call upon your presence, Lord, at this moment, Lord. We call upon your goodness to come and dwell in our midst. We have prayed and believed that your word is going to be at work during this session. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, Amen. That was the that was the opening prayer on behalf of the Christians, and so the program has officially begun. We are going to have next the opening prayer on behalf of the Muslims, and so I want to invite to the microphone former Reverend Father. He is now a Muslim. Alhaji Ibrahim Jomo. Auz Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I greet you all in the name of Allah, the Lord who never sleeps nor can slumber overtake him. May you have this program in a, as a successful one. And the one that will not bring rancor or problem among us. In Allah's name, we are starting this program in this holy month of Ramadan. May Allah make it be holy and for us here to be holy before we leave this place. Whatsoever will bring gossip and trouble in this place, I will pray against it. As we leave this place, let the truth be known. Let the truth be told. Please, no challenge, no quarrel, no fight among ourselves. May God, in His infinite mercy, grant us listening ears and a heart to comprehend the truth about Islam and the discussion of today. Thank you so very much. Allah bless you all. I am going to sit down and listen to you as you continue. Moderator, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, we've had the we have the timekeepers seated. We have the Christian debater and the Muslim debater seated. We also have them seated with their uh, resource persons beside them. So we are moving straight to the program. I will read out the modalities for the dialogue. First of all, we're going to have five minutes introductory speech. Five minutes introductory speech. The Muslim preacher will be speaking first, and then the Christian speaker. Will be... the, the Muslim speaker, who is our guest, will be speaking first. And then the Christian speaker will speak second. So the purpose of the introductory speech, he will tell, give a little bit of introduction about himself, and then maybe he may tell us the benefits of interfaith dialogue, 
And then he, he may also tell us a little bit of how he intends to handle the topic. Both speakers. After five minutes, main lecture main lecture will be 30 minutes on the topic the way of salvation please let us just um, act like nobody knows the way of salvation only these two people only these two people claiming that they know the way of salvation all of us we are here to learn okay so that when the Muslim speaker is speaking, listening like somebody who is looking for the way of salvation. Don't say, oh, I'm a Christian. I already know the way. No. Or, no, I'm a Muslim. This is the way. No. Me, myself, today, I don't know the way of salvation. I want to learn. Please. Uh, so, 30 minutes lecture. We listen to the lecture. And then, the Christian speaker will also come, we listen to him for 30 minutes, like we are looking for the way of salvation. After 30 minutes, they will come back 15, 15 minutes. After 30 minutes, they will come back for 15, 15 minutes, first rebuttal. And I would like to appeal to the honorable Christian speaker and the honorable Muslim speaker, when you come for rebuttal, please don't use it for a second lecture. Use your rebuttal to answer the issues raised by the other speaker. Okay? So it is a rebuttal time, it's not a lecture time. So do your best to package your lectures. I hope the two honorable debaters are listening to me. Do your best to package your lecture in 30 minutes. Don't say that... You do not have enough time for the 30 minutes, then you start another lecture during rebuttal. We want you to use your rebuttal to do rebuttal, to respond to what the other person said. So 15 minutes rebuttal, then the second rebuttal is, is 10 minutes. So lecture 30 minutes, rebuttal 15 minutes, and another rebuttal 10 minutes. Then we go to cross-examination. The cross-examination period is simply for the speaker to ask one another question. Okay? The first speaker will ask the second speaker three questions. It's not a time for, we don't want any form of rowdiness at all. We want it to be very smooth. You ask your question, he will answer according to his ability. We don't want... To so, hear, yeah, oh, I'm not satisfied by your answer. No. It may not satisfy you. Just ask the question. For one minute for a question and three minutes to answer. Okay? Timekeepers will help us to enforce those rules. So whatever you want to ask in, three min in one minute, three minutes, they will ask each other. And that will be it. Now, the members of the audience who want to ask questions, you ask questions. You tell us who your question is directed to. If you are directing your question to the Honorable Christian Speaker, you let us know. If you are directing your question to the Honorable Muslim Speaker, when you're, you ask your question, package your question in one minute. Please. We are not asking you to come for a lecture or you start another debate. If you want debate, you, we can organize. So, ask your question in one minute. Speaker, we answer your question in three minutes. Whether you belly full or you not belly full, something like that. The speaker will answer the question according to his best of ability. I need to know, we need to get this mic stable because we are about to start now.
engineers, please help us. You know, uh, we don't want any disruption when our honorable speakers are presenting the lecture. Me, I want to learn. I don't know the way of salvation. I want to learn. If you can convince me on the way of salvation, I'm so grateful. If the other one can convince me, I want to be grateful to God because on the day of judgment, I'm sorry, let's just give our engineers a few minutes with the microphone. Doctrine statements. Hallelujah. Mr. Jamu, are you are you ready? Hello. Okay. Five minutes. Timekeeper. Audubillahi min al-shaytani rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. All praises is due to Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. I pray Allah to be with us today throughout the program. Now, in my just five minute uh, talk, I would like to appreciate those that are here now and those that will be joining us later. I appreciate all my Muslim brethren that are on seats. Likewise, the, I'm sorry, the few Christians that are here. When I heard the program is going to be owned in the church, I'm very happy. I thought I'd be seeing thousands of Christians around there. But unfortunately, it is the same story. But that's not a problem anyway. Because this program is live, both on YouTube and um, Facebook. Now, this one is the first time of having this kind of program. We all are aware. And uh, I think, um, to me, Hello, hello. Hello. As I said earlier on, I said I think this is the best thing we need in the whole wide world, particularly in Nigeria. Because in Africa here, yeah, we've taken religion to be another entirely. We don't feel that religion should be a thing of peace and a thing of mind as well. So having this program will encourage people that I don't even know. Because so people thought reading the Quran is a sin unto them as a Christian. Likewise, the Muslims, some Muslims also believe reading the Bible is a sin, which is not. This is knowledge. But the Christian believe in their own Bible. Likewise, the Muslim believe in their own Bible as well. I even challenge one of the Abalists and the, or the attraction worshippers. 
that if you have a book that we can dip into and study it, then we have a dialogue with you. Everybody claims self-righteousness. Everybody claims self-righteousness. So there's nothing you do in the world that will feel as if you don't know what you are participating in. So, the Quran encourages this kind of a thing. Likewise, going through the Bible. Because you share the Quran chapter 3 verse um, 64. I said to Mama that you should invite because this kind of a thing happens in Medina. Between Prophet Muhammad and the Jews. Likewise, the Nazarenes that live in Medina. So they encourage such. I said, call them to a round table talk. And iron out our differences. There are some places the Jews and the Nazarene met in their own book. So if we can use those, that idea here in Africa as well, I think we live in peace. Be able to understand one another. Likewise, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 18, the Bible said, Come, because when the Israelites were doubting the integrity of God, then God now invited them, said, Come, let us reason together. So we need to reason together. People believe we have two religions on earth, even in Nigeria, which I do not anyway, which I don't. But people believe we have religion, Christianity and Islam. So if we are interwoven, because there's no family on earth, even in Nigeria, here, yeah, that don't have Christian or Muslim in their family, or like myself, I have, Christian, I have Christian sisters. And I have Muslim sisters as well. Although I'm only male in the family anyway. But my Christian sisters are there. Should, should, should I go and fight them? Because they are not Muslims? No. The only thing I need to do is to dialogue with them. If you think what you are having is good, then let's come. I'm sure of my own religion. Are you also sure of your religion? Then let us have a dialogue. Let's meet in, in a point and rob minds. Just to rob minds. We are not forced. I'm not forcing my religion on you. Likewise, forcing your own faith on me as well. But whenever truth is revealed, then we accept it. That's my belief anyway. I don't hate Christians at all. I love them all. I love the Christians. You, you are not a Christian. So why you are a human being? I love you all. One minute. So far, a human being, I love everybody. So I'm encouraging the whole wide world to please embrace this kind of thing. Particularly right. Christians. Time up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Jamie Adegunwa, for that uh, very beautiful introductory statement. He, met, he mentioned something about the number of Christians. We want to assure you that as different churches begin to open their doors, more and more churches begin to open their doors to em encourage Christian-Muslim dialogue. I believe that we are going to see a larger turnout of Christians subsequently. So thank you. Now for the Christian speaker, are you ready? I will be inviting the Christian speaker to come and give us the introductory statement. Thank you very much. Praise be to the Most High God. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm very happy to be here. And I'm really very glad to stand here. This is my first time in Nigeria. My name is Umaru Mustafa Nyanzi. I am a Ugandan. But I've been following uh, Nigerian affairs on social media and other, and other online platforms. And so I'm not very new. And I've been following this man and others. And uh, I'm really excited to be here tonight. And uh, my name, as I told you, I'm Omaru Mustafa Nyanzi. I was born in a Muslim family. 
Just as he said that we can exist in the same family where we have people who believe in a different faith and others who believe in a different faith. It is the same in my family also. My mother, my father and some uncles and some sisters and brothers are still Muslims, but I am a Christian and uh, I, I'm not ashamed of being a Christian and they are also not ashamed of being Muslims. We are in the same family. Our father is the same and our mother is the same and things are moving on very well. And uh, I also attended uh, dialogues like this and I had people sharing the message. I had people reading the Bible and uh, the Quran I did not read anyone. I, need, I didn't need anyone to read for me because I knew already. When I heard the Bible, the promises of it Mm, looked very heavy and weightier than what I had in the Quran and I chose to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and things are moving on very well so I'm really very happy as we share you may also pick something from me as he shares I may also pick something from him and life moves on very well I'm really very glad um, we came to, 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 to Nigeria with my brother Joseph I believe the rest of you are Nigerians, we are the Ugandans from East Africa. And some people may be hearing Uganda for the first time, it's okay. Uh, our message basically in this book, this is what we basically believe as our ministry from Uganda. We believe that Allah, who is talked about in the Quran that you read, as people say is God. We don't want to argue with them. But he is not the God of the Bible according to our message in the book. And the Isa, who is the prophet of Islam, the one who did not die on the cross, we don't have any troubles with him because he never died on the cross. He is not our Jesus Christ who had the plan of salvation right from even before the world was created. Uh, so we do not want to create any troubles between the two sects. We want us to have Jesus Christ that we have to sell to you that was prepared by God to save this world from the condemnation that is coming. And you also have your Isa that you need to sell to us and tell us where he was born, why did he come, who, to whom did he preach, and all that. And then life moves on very well. Praise be to the Most High God. And everything will be perfect in its sense. Um, Brother Isang is my friend okay. and is actually the one who invited me to Nigeria. One minute more. Thank you very much. The first time I read his profile, he had a statement that dialogue is the best alternative. It is something that will substitute terrorism and violence. If you read from the Quran and I read from the Bible and you are satisfied that you truly and surely Allah is not God, why would you get a knife to cut me? If I read from the Bible and I'm satisfied that surely and truly salvation is in Jesus alone, why would I get a knife to cut you? So we have many religious tensions just because people don't know the alternative which is the best and that is dialogue. So enjoy your day very well, get a pen and a paper. We are going to study very well. I studied Islam, I know what I'm talking about and I believe he studied the Bible and he knows what he talks about. So we believe everything is going to be perfectly proceeding in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who died and rose again, not Isa. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. We have had the opening statements from both the Christian speaker and the Muslim speaker. And I'm sure we are going to have a very interesting time. We are going to have very uh, educative lecture. So please, when the lecturer is speaking, it is best to have your biro and paper for this program. It's best to have your biro and newspaper, and I believe I'm going to learn a lot of things today. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I will be calling on the Honorable Muslim Speaker to present his lecture, 30 minutes lecture. I will appeal to him so please package your lecture. I know he's somebody that can talk for three hours. If you give him three hours, it will not be enough. If you give him five hours, it will not be enough. He's a very sensational lecturer. When you hear him, you enjoy his lecture very well. 
and um, he has been my very good friend for a long time. Although I, I senior him because I am 50 years old, he is not yet 50 years old. He is not yet 50 years old, but I am 50 years old, so I am a senior. Although I will not impose seniority in this program, I will just be a humble, uh, a humble moderator. So, are you ready, sir? So let me introduce the, bring over the Honorable Muslim Speaker to give us a lecture in 30 minutes on the topic, the way of salvation. Ustaz Jamio Adegunwa. Thank you very much. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. As I've said in my opening speech, I thank Almighty Allah for this occasion who has brought us here in peace to rub minds, to share views, to share even ideas that will favor our lives here in this world and the year after. May Allah in his mercy let us understand his messages. Amen. Now the topic we are discussing today the way to salvation. Though, it's not a new topic anyway, but I'm going to take it in a new dimension entirely. Now, the word salvation, the plan of salvation is a concept. It's a Christian concept. In fact, it's not even found in the Old Testament. God's plan to save humanity from sin. You know, although it's not my style, but uh, I, I need to do this. <laughs> because the evangelist that came from Uganda, I learned he was a Muslim, and he has said it here as well. And then uh, you see, I love to have a dialogue with such person. Because what I know is that Islam is the only way to salvation. The only way to eternity. But some, for someone, so should I be, because I was never a Christian. I was never a Christian. I only have the knowledge, a divine knowledge of the Bible. I've never been a Christian, never in my life. Please don't interrupt. <laughs> now, but for a man, who was a Muslim, so she have come from that religion and be a Christian. It baffles me. Because what I know in the Bible cannot even allow me to be a Christian. What I know in the Bible cannot allow me to be a Christian. Because I'm a, so, I'm a, so, I'm a person that is so inquisitive. I ask questions. I ask, well, you can ask my Muslim brothers and sisters. My own is quite different from all their ideas. Because I love questions. Because I don't want a situation whereby I'll be, inter I'll be interviewed and I'll be saying, eh, this is what I, I know and this is what I was taught. No, I don't believe in what I thought. Taught. No, I believe in what I know. What God revealed unto me. Now, the plan of salvation is a Christian concept. Regarding God's plan, to humanity from sin and its consequences. It occurs first time in New Testament. For example, in the Gospel of Matthew and Gospel of Mark. Though some scholars consider this idea fully developed first time in the Gospel of Luke. Gospel of Luke. And this very Luke, as we all know, was never a disciple of Jesus. Never. He was a physician to, apost to save a claim Apostle Paul. Now, this plan was based on the blood dead and religion of Jesus. The pen that postulated this doctrine is save a claim Apostle Paul. He says in his in his write-up according to what Luke wrote, according to what Luke 
So I don't let me go to Luke. Let me go to um, the word faith itself. God's ways that as that are saved by grace through faith in Christ. That's Paul saying. Jesus and not by our own effort or work. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. That is Paul, not Jesus. Our best effort can never be good enough to earn salvation. But God declares us righteous for Christ's sake. We receive the grace through faith alone. This is not Jesus saying. I quoted Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. No, no, no. Have just 30 minutes. That's why I put everything here. Now, according to the word salvation, even let's you save. If you say, I'm a savior, you are a savior. What does that imply? Save. Savior, save. What does that imply? What does that mean? You mean Jesus now to be a savior or me or you to be a savior? Let's go to the book of um, book of James. James chapter 5 verse 19 and 20. The Bible said, Brethren, if any one of you do err from the truth, and someone converted him. If somebody leaves the truth, for example, somebody move away from Islam, or somebody move from Christianity, at least as a Christian, you knew what to believe. Somebody now preach unto you, and you left that thing and go to that religion. Or you are a drunkard, or you are an humanizer. Somebody now preach unto you, you now left that way of life for better one. The Bible said, brethren, if anyone do away from the truth, and one convert him, verse 20, let him know that he which converted a sinner from his error will save his soul from death and shall add a multiple sin. Which means, the one saved implies to every one of us here. If I preach, you are a savior. If I cancel out, you are a savior. According to the book of James chapter 5, verse 19 to 20. Now, let me now go back to my point. Way of salvation. In Islam, before I go back to the Bible, Quran informed us that the only way to salvation is by being a Muslim. And I'm quoting Quran chapter 3, verse 85. Allah said, How do we learn in the Shaitan Rahim? Allah said, Quran chapter 3, verse 85. Woman, you have taken Islam within. Fallan yukbala minu. Wa vila akhira min al khasirin. Allah said, Whosoever, whosoever desire another way of life or a religion than to be a Muslim, than Islam, is never going to be acceptable of him. And on the last day, you will be among the losers. May that not be our portion anyway. Now, every prophet of God was sent with a message of salvation. Every prophet of God, including Muhammad, Moses, and Jesus, those are the known ones. We have Isaiah, we have Jeremiah, we have, but the known ones in Nigeria were Muhammad, Moses, and Jesus. Particularly, Jesus and Muhammad. But we don't have disciples of Moses in Nigeria. We don't have them. We only have Christians who claims, although they are not anyway, who claims that they are disciples of Jesus. That's another point. In Quran chapter, chapter 65, verse 11, because of time, Allah said, a messenger who recite to you God's verses? Who recite to you the Quran clear and distinct that he may bring those? Look at the statement. He may save those. He may bring those who believe and 
Walk righteousness from darkness into light. That the word Savior. It's a messenger. That's Muhammad. That has been given a book. That's the Quran. That will bring those that are in darkness. If you are not a Muslim, you are in darkness. That's your truth. If you are not a Muslim, you are in darkness. Because the whole wide world were in darkness. Before the advent of Muhammad. So that's why Allah said to him. That to bring those who are in darkness into light. Whoever believes in God, in Allah, and acts with integrity, he will admit them into garden. That's paradise. Which water river flows. Then they abide forever. Minutes. 20 more minutes. Thank you. God has given him excellent provision. In Quran chapter 6 as well. Verse 151. Say, Allah commanded Muhammad. Say, Come, let me tell you what God has forbidden for you. What might debar you from gaining eternal life? What might debar you from being saved from hell? Allah said, Come, say to them, Come, let me tell you, let me inform you of what God has forbidden. That you associate nothing with him. You must not believe that thing will come without the knowledge of God unto your life. You must not believe that there are some witches, wizards out there that can affect your life negatively or positively. You must not have anything with God. That's the first thing you must know. That you honor your parents as well. You must believe your mother and your father that they are the best in your life. You must not abuse your parents. And that thing. That you do not kill your children because of poverty. Abortion is, is not allowed in Islam. Abortion is never allowed in Islam. Because they will not kill your children because of poverty. Again, God now said, we provide them for you and them. That you do not come near indebtedness, whether outward or inward. Let me leave that. Now, to now go back now, as God has commanded Muhammad to say all this, he now told him that with all this, so you cannot save anyone. You can only show them way. You cannot enforce anybody to be on that road. You can't. Muhammad has no power to do that. That's what Allah said in the Quran. In Quran chapter 6, verse 125, Allah said, Whomever God desires to guide, whomever God desires to guide, he will open his mind to Islam. And whoever he desires to misguide, he will make his heart narrow, constricted, as though he were climbing the sky. God does less development upon those who do not believe. So that's our faith. That is our faith in Islam. Now, let me now go back to, before I proceed, let me go back to the Bible. I said earlier on that the word salvation only comes in through Christianity. Not even in Old Testament. Through Christianity. Now, a question will be thrown. Let's see Moses as well. Let's see Moses. In Quran chapter 40, chapter 40 verse, um, verse 40, 40, 40, 42, God said to Moses, from verse 37, but because of time, 40, just 42, you called me to reject, Moses was addressing the Israelites, that you called me to reject God. He said, no, don't believe in God. I mean, the, the Egyptians, don't believe God. Believe in, believe in Pharaoh. He's the most powerful on earth. Moses now said, you call me to reject God and to also see the doctrine was laid down by self-acclaimed apostle Paul. It was now from Jesus. Let me give you an example. There was a scene that happens that occurs in the book of Acts of Apostles. Chapter 16. From verse 30 and 31. And brought them out. 
He said, Sir, what shall I do to be saved? He knew that Paul was not the savior. What shall I do to be saved? That's the question. And that's why we are here tonight. What shall I do to be saved? Look at the answer Paul gave. And they said, Believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord, and you shall more. be saved and thy house. That's the response Sarah Apostle Paul gave to that man. If you go down to Romans chapter 10, verse 9, the letter he wrote to the Romans, that's Apostle Paul. He said, Thou, if thou that confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you confess that with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in all utterly that he has risen from death, then you are saved. That is his own doctrine, not from Jesus at all. Because one, Jesus is not Lord. That's not the topic anyway. Jesus is not Lord. He's never Lord. That's not the topic. So, you know, say, if you believe that Jesus is Lord, and we believe that he has risen from death, we are saved. That is his own doctrine. Look at what happened when Jesus was alive. I'm quoting Matthew chapter 19 from verse 16 downward. And behold, one came to Jesus and said unto him, Good teacher, what good thing must I do to have eternal life? That's the question. What can I do to be saved? That's why we are here. Look at the question Paul was being asked. He said, believe in Lord Jesus Christ and you are saved. What is the response of Jesus? Because I know one thing. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 24, Jesus said, the servant can never be greater than the master. So, the master is talking now. I've quoted the servant already. The servant said, for you to be saved, believe Jesus as Lord and stop as our Savior. But Jesus now, was being asked the same question. He said, behold, a man came and said, what must I do to be saved? Verse 17. And he said unto him, why thou call me good? Why do you say I'm good? No one is good except one, and that is God. So Jesus is not good. It's only God that is good. According to Jesus. In verse 18, he said unto him, which? He now said, sorry, there's no good but God. But if thou willest to be saved, to gain eternal life, give me commandment of God. But, but Paul, but Paul, save a clear apostle, the servant now said, no, don't believe in commandment of God. Just believe in Jesus and you are going to be saved. We don't know who's the master anyway. He now said, please do he now said, in verse 18, he said unto him, the man said unto him, which one? Jesus said, thou shalt not commit murder, blah, 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 and also and so forth, because of time. In verse 21, Jesus said, he said unto him, if thou art to be perfect, the man does not commit murder, does not lie, he has deceived from all these evil things. Jesus now said, if you want to be perfect, which means, okay, the Christians are perfect. Is that right? I'm not sure, I'm not sure. The reason is this. You know, said, if you want to be perfect, you just say, go and sell all what you have and give them to the poor. You shall have riches in heaven. Which means, it's a sin unto a Christian to be rich. It's a sin. If you are rich, you are going to hell. Matthew chapter 19, I don't know, maybe I misquoted it anyway, but this is what I read in the Bible. He said, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all what you have and give to the poor. Thou shalt have treasures in heaven. Then come and follow me. So I don't want to be poor, so I cannot follow Jesus. I love riches, I don't want to be poor. Now, because of time, in verse 22. But when Yoma had this, he went away sorrowful. 
For he had a great possession. He's very rich. Verse 23. The angel answered the disciples and said, Verily I saw unto you that a man shall hardly, a rich man shall hardly gain salvation or eternal life. 24. But I say unto you again, it is easier for a camel to go through the eyes of a needle than for a rich man to gain eternal life. Ten more minutes. Ten. Ten, Abby. Uh, don't let me rush myself. Now, in verse 25, when the disciples had this, <laughs> when they had this, they were exceedingly amazed. That was all this rubbish. Say, who then can be saved? That's the question we are about to answer tonight. Who then can be saved? I stopped at 25. I'm still going back to that place. Let me go another place. Now, I said to Mohammed, in Quran chapter 10, verse 107. Allah said, If God afflicts you, none will remove except him alone. So nobody can save you except God alone. Mind you, the question the disciple asked Jesus was that who then can be saved? Who can determine? Who is the author? Who, who is the mouthpiece of God that will tell you you are, you are saved? You are saved. You are saved. Who? Is it Jesus or Muhammad? Let's proceed. Jesus himself has problem when he was alive, don't you know? How can I want to be saved? Go to Jesus and say, save me. Was he saved himself? Of course not. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. The Bible said, Who in those in flesh, when, uh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him, who was able to save him from death? Who was able, who was able to save him from death? death and he was had his fear who was this man who was this man crying for help from who from God who was he in Hebrews 5 verse 7 who was the Bible referring to let's go and check that in the book of Luke chapter 22 from verse um, 37 downward for I say unto you that it is written must be yet be accomplished in me. And it was reckoned among the transgressors for the thing it concerned me and an end. Verse 38. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. The what happened was that they were preparing for war because they don't need to be arrested and prosecuted for his own sin. For his own sin, according to the Jews. Because Jesus sinned against the Jews. That's not the topic. Jesus is a sinner against the Jews. He sinned against them. So they wanted to punish him for his sins. You are now called his disciples. In verse 36 of that 22 look. Then he said unto them, I go to 36 now. He said unto them, Now that he has, he said unto them, But now that he that has a pause should take it. And he that has come should take it. But he that has no sword should sell his garment and buy one. They are preparing for war. He knew he was going to be arrested and prosecuted. But he thought maybe in his own way he can dodge the calamities and persecutions. In verse 43, because of time, 43. In Luke 22, 43 and 44. And tell unto him, let me from 42, say, Father, if thou willing, remove this call from me, 42 now. If thou willing, or let me say from 41, because of time, oh. And he was withdrawn.
from about a stone cast. And he kneeled down. Jesus kneeled down and prayed. Unto who? Your Savior. How can my Savior pray unto another Savior? My, my prayer. My Lord now kneel down for another Lord. No, 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 no. Five that's, more that's minutes. Ridic that's ridiculous. Okay. Now, say, Father, if thou willing, remove this call from me. He was calling on another Savior. So, he is not a Savior. He cannot save us. Because he is only begging for another Savior. You know, say, if thou willing, take this call away from me. It's not my will, but your own will. In verse 43. And then he appeared on, in, in, unto, unto him an angel threatening him. In 44. And being in an agony, a Lord being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, it was dropped like a great blood falling to the ground. Who I can mention is this? And he wanted me to follow this as my savior. When he was crying on the other savior that I access to direct, I can access my God. Why must I need any intermediary? Why do I have to pray to Mammy to pray to God? Why? It's not a portion. A Muslim prays to God direct. We don't pray to Muhammad. We don't say Muhammad name, we pray. No. How can I pray Muhammad name? You cannot pay my name. No, no. Because my man is his own. My God is own, his own. In John chapter 4, to know whom Hebrews chapter 5 and 7 was referring to. Again, Hebrew, John chapter 12, verse 27 to. Ah, what's of time? Okay, I'm coming. No, no. Let me just jump. You can read John chapter 12, verse 27 to 30 at home. You see how Jesus needed help from God. That he has no power upon. Now, I could say Quran chapter chapter five, 6, verse 125, where Allah said, If Allah willed, he guided whom he witches. The same thing applies to Jesus. In the book of John chapter 4, John chapter 6, sorry, verse 60, 44 and 45. Oh, ah, shit. Jesus said, no one can come unto me except my father draws him. And that was among the Israelites anyway because he was not sent to the whole world. He was sent to the Lordship of Israel. According to Matthew 24, Jesus said, I was sent only to the Lordship of Israel. So the same thing in verse John chapter chapter 6. Verse 65 as well. Jesus said, Therefore I said unto you, No man come unto me except it was given by my Father in heaven. So somebody is superior. God is superior to Jesus. You know, it's a boy. It's a boy. So he, never, he can never claim to be God. And she can never claim to be our savior or to have the salvation of our life in his hand. That's why he said in John chapter 12, verse 49 and 50. Because of time, Jesus said, oh yeah, if you have it there, because of time. Yeah. For I have not spoken among authority. But the Father who has sent me gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. And I know God's commandment is salvation. One minute more. Not Jesus. One minute more. God's command is salvation. So on this note, I'm imploring the Christians here to please listen attentively and have second thoughts and have second thoughts Salam alaikum thank you very much 
the Honorable Muslim Speaker. He, we have heard the lecture presentation by Ustaz Jami Wadegunwa on the topic, The Way of Salvation. And I really enjoyed the lecture so much. I hope you enjoyed it too. And so, in a matter of um, a few seconds, the Christian speaker, the Honorable Christian debater, will be coming up to present his own lecture for 30 minutes on the topic, The Way of Salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome Evangelist Umar Nyanzi. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Moderator. Our moderator for the time given to me. I want to thank God for this environment. Thank you. I will testify to the Ugandans that Nigerians are good people. If you're not good, that is upon you, but what I've seen, you are good people. And uh, I want to thank the Muslim speaker. He is a good man. Because I know some Muslims who are really very tough that cannot use such time without insulting anyone, but he has not insulted anyone. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Omar, as I told you, and as he was speaking, he was reminding me a number of things, a number of things, some of which I studied in uh, uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 28, and verse 18. That is what I'm going to open with. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18. 28, yes. 18. The opening verse. Matthew 28, verse? Verse 18. Verse 18. The Bible says, mm. Jesus came and told his disciples, yes. I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Thank you. Jesus declared very well and clear, and no one doubts that, apart from those who don't believe, that all authority in heaven and on earth is for him. Now, if we ask a question that who is the Lord of the heaven and the earth, the answer is very simple, is Jesus Christ the Lord. And no one has doubt in that. When I read that verse, it reminded me something I read in the Quran many years ago. And that is Surah Al-Dariyati, that is chapter 20, 51 of the Quran and ayat number 23. This is how the Quran says, Al-Quran yaqulu, Allah yaqulu fi kitab al-Quran. Allah says in the book called Quran, and for sama'i wal ardi. In the translation, it says, by the Lord of heaven and earth. I understood already, the Lord of heaven and earth is Jesus Christ. Now we find Allah swearing here in this book. Because a little Arabic, for those who understand Arabic language, in Arabic language, wow, the letter wow has many functions. And among them, it is a letter that is used for swearing. And swearing, we understand that by you, you swear by him who is greater than you, and no one disputes. In the Quran, at the beginning, Allah uses a wow known as a wow al qasam. For the people who know Arabic, you understand a wow al qasam is used for swearing to one that is greater than you. Wallahu says, Fa wa rabbi samai wal ardi. And I swear by him that is the Lord of heaven and earth, then I understand that Allah is saluting Jesus Christ, that he is the Lord. Uh, when I read that verse, all that I had in my mind of criticizing Jesus, of demeaning Jesus, I knew that the master I was calling Master Allah, he is saying Jesus is the Lord of heaven and the earth. And I started respecting Jesus without any fear or favor. Uh, Number two, why I consider Jesus to be superior to Allah is this. Someone, uh, the, I was told that Jesus prays because he prays. That is why he's not God. Then I carried it in my head that whoever prays is not God. 
As I was continuing reading my book Quran, I reached to chapter 33 of the Quran and verses 56. Wayakulu Hakada. It says that uh, in Allah, indeed Allah, ladies and gentlemen, if someone begins the sentence with inna filugatul Arabiya in Arabic language, hadha, Yukalu al harufu tawkidi harufu tawkidi in dama tastamilu bidali kal haruf when you use that haruf whatever you say is not metaphorical it is just a plain truth that no one should dispute and when they are using this they say inna Allah indeed all the truth actually the Bible says verily verily it is double positive inna Allah indeed Allah wa malaikatahu not alone plus his angels inclusive yusalluna ala nabi they pray for the prophet they also pray for the prophet and then I asked if Allah is indeed God to whom does he pray why does he reduce himself down to a level of praying and I remember the surah that yet ayah 23 where Allah prays I mean salutes the Lord of heaven and the earth and I knew he must be praying to the Lord of heaven and earth, and that is Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. When I was still a Muslim, I was told something, ladies and gentlemen, that I think is not the truth. And people who know Arabic will bear me witness. They used to tell me that the word Yusaluna, it means to send blessings. But as a person who understood Arabic, who studied a bit of Arabic, the word swalla and blessing and blessing we have no connection and sending first and foremost if someone wants to say in arabic language that is so and so is sending a blessing you would say in allah indeed allah wa malaikatahu and his angels yursiluna al barakat ala nabi they send the blessings to the prophet but that is not the case here Allah is on Muswali, he is also praying to a superior God, and that is Jesus Christ, the Lord of heaven and the earth. Amen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the topic is the way of salvation. Number one, the years I spend in Isla, maybe I will hear it today when someone is telling me, I never had anything like this is how they get saved. This is the savior, and this is the way of salvation, never. I only heard it from my teachers who used to tell me that Islam is the way of salvation. Acts chapter, 12 and, chapter 4 and verse number 12. Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12. The Bible says, There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Acts chapter number 4 has told us that there is no any other name on earth that has been given unto us by which we can be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank God for the years I spent in Islam. Quran was very sincere. It did not mention anyone whose name by which people can be saved. It never mentioned anyone's name by which people can be saved. The Bible has told us there is only one name by which we can be saved. When you go a little up, that is verse number 11, it will mention for you that that name by which we can be saved is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Amen. And because on earth, not even in newspapers, we have found any name through which we can attain salvation, it is very clear that by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, only salvation is found. And I was very happy when I read Quran and someone was saying, Al Quran huwa musaddiqa lima bayna yadaihi. It is a confirmation. It is not an opposing force, but it is something that confirms. If the statement says that the name of Jesus through which only people can be saved, the Quran says that is Sodak, Sodak, 
That is the truth. Hadha Siddiq. The Quran says that is the truth. Praise be to God. So if any Muslim opposes the name of Jesus as the name by which people are saved, then he is rebellious to the Quran. I'm sorry, in Luganda we say that energy comes from food. I don't know where it comes from here in Nigeria. 20 minutes more. I will ask the Muslim side that we may have one audience. Thank you very much. Having seen that there is only one name by which we can be saved, and that is the name of Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to proceed. When I was still a Muslim, I used to hear that Muhammad brought the message of uh, by which people can be saved, though it is not documented. But this is what I, I understood. That when Muhammad was still living, Allah passed a death announcement on him. On earth, Allah passed a death announcement on him, declaring him a dead man. You're going to open with me the, 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 the chapter 39 of the Quran and verse 30. And you're going to write. 39. 39 verse 30. The Quran says. Verily you, O Muhammad, will die. And verily they too will die. Allow me to first remove the coat. I don't mean the heat is too much. Quran chapter 39 and verse 30, this is what it has said. That innaka mayitun wa innahum mayitun. Indeed Muhammad, the translator said you will die. But the truth of the matter found in that ayah has never meant that Muhammad will die. But it has said that Muhammad Hua Mayitun is a dead person, is a corpse. If you don't know Arabic, you may not understand me. But if you understand a bit of Arabic language, a dead person is called Mayitun, a corpse in English. So Muhammad is informed that he is dead. And someone will ask, how can a dead person be moving? Read for me Luke chapter. Uh, help me with the, my drink. Luke chapter. Luke chapter 9, verse 60. The book of Luke chapter 9, verse 60. The Bible says, Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. 
Jesus said that let the dead bury their own dead. That means someone can be living and people seeing the person walking, but in the spiritual world, the person is considered a dead person. I want to thank God that my fellow speaker said here that he has divine wisdom in the Bible. The divine wisdom will lead him to understand that Muhammad was dead. A dead one. So though he was still walking, he did not have the life of God. You're going to read for me John chapter 5, first John chapter 5 verse 11 and 12. First John chapter 5 1 John chapter 5 verse 11. 11 and 12. The Bible says, And this is what God has testified. This is the testimony of God, ladies and gentlemen. He has given us eternal life. Eternal life is given unto us already. And this life is in his son. And that life is kept in the son of God, Jesus Christ. Whoever has the son... If you're here under this roof today and you know that you have the Son of God has life. Clap for yourself because you have the life. Whoever does not have God's Son If you know and you're here that you do not have the Son of God does not have life. Look at yourself inside and you know that you don't have life. You're dead like Muhammad. That is why the verse of the Quran has said that in Nakamaitu Muhammad, indeed you are dead. The deceiving translator put for you the word there, you will die. He made a noun to be a verb. If, you're, and if you studied, you know Arabic language, you know English, you will understand there is a difference between a noun and a verb. A noun which is there is even mushak munawan. It is having tanwin at the end. There is no verb. In the world of Arabia, that has it and win, never. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, according to the divine wisdom of the Bible that my friend has, Muhammad was a dead person spiritually. So a spiritually dead person could never deliver spiritual life again to a person like me. Amen. That is why, before someone would condemn me why I left Islam, the reason is the leader was dead. And Allah also passed a death announcement and to us the believers that were in and you are also dead. So ladies and gentlemen, you're here, you're believing in Muhammad, the leader that is follow, I mean that is leading you is a dead person. And for you that is he is leading. He's also a dead person and the Bible has said that if you don't have the son of God, you don't have life. He literally, you're dead. You're going to read for me John chapter 3 and verse 31 up to 36. John chapter 3 verse 31 to 36. Are you there? I am. John chapter 3, the gospel according to John. The I Bible th says, Yes, please. He who comes from above. There is someone that came from above. Wait a minute. When you go back a little, in John chapter 3 verse 13, the Bible declares clearly that Jesus came from heaven. Now they are talking to, about someone who came from above. above. If you're there, you're a Muslim, and you're sure Muhammad came from above, go and search yourself. Because he came from the earth just like you and I. But you can read. He who comes from above is above all. The one that comes from above is above all things. Continue. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. A one that is of the earth like you and I is earthly and speaks of earthly things. Wait a minute. When I was still a Muslim, everything that we used to believe 
I don't know about you, maybe you studied some other version of the Quran, but if it is this one that I have and I studied it from the Madrasa and Jamia wal Ma'ahad of Islam, this is what I studied. Whatever we, we were taught was earthly, beginning from clothing that you had to put on a trouser that is above something that God is annoyed by seeing, having your trouser down. That is earthly. Number two, saying that when you put the trouser above your clean, yet dirty or filthiness comes from within, that is earthly. And that is what Muhammad taught. That is why the Bible has said, he that is of the earth like you and I speaks of earthly things. His message was only earthly. And even when you cross to his paradise, earthly because sex is earthly, there is a substance on you that enjoys women. The day you will die, you will be buried and the thing will rot in the ground. You will no more enjoy sex anymore. But Muhammad told that, what, that that is what is going to be in paradise. Earthly pressures. The Bible says he that comes from above, that is Jesus, is above all things. He speaks of what he has seen. When he says the Father has said he ten has seen more. the... How ten many? minutes more. Ten, 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 thank you very ten. much. It will be enough. You know... In Uganda, energy comes from food. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when he says the Father has said there is eternal life, I'm giving you eternal life because he's giving us something that is from where he came. He has seen the Father. He knows heaven. He knows paradise. He knows everything about Muhammad was conceived in the mother's womb and he knew nothing about what is there. And... He is telling us of the things of the world, of the wisdom people get from food, like or akara. That is the wisdom he's giving us. But the Bible has said, Jesus Christ, because he came from above, do you know his father? Who knows the father of Jesus and you put up the hand? No one here on this side about the father of Jesus. It is now uh, darkness. But... He came from heaven. Who is the father of Jesus? Is God. That is where he came from. He said that you, the one that you call... Someone is arguing, maybe you are the father of Jesus. You see, Jesus said that the one you call God, that is my father. Now he speaks of something he knows better. And this salvation is not something that started in the New Testament. This salvation is not something that started just yesterday. The Bible says when you read the book of uh, Luke chapter 2 and verses 25 that this salvation was prepared right from the beginning of the earth. It was prepared through the holy prophets. It was prepared through the people of the old who came speaking the message of God pointing unto the salvation. First Peter chapter 1 and verses 10. The Bible is very clear on that. Ladies and gentlemen, Isaiah chapter number 49 and verse 6. Jesus talks of his servant, I mean God talks of his servant that is going to bring salvation that is eternal to the ends of the world. I used to think that salvation is a New Testament business only. Isaiah is a prophet that lived many, many years before Jesus, before the New Testament. And he's saying there is a servant of God. That is going to bring salvation to the ends of the world beyond the boundaries of Israel. And the salvation will be eternal. When I read Quran, chapter number 5 and verses 90, says, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu inna mal hamru wal maisir wal answab wal azuram rijisun min amari shaitan fajutan buhu la'allakum tufrihun. That indeed gambling and alcohol and witchcraft are things of the devil. Stay away from them. Maybe. Well, you see, when someone uses the word la Allah, la Allah is a haruf taraji. You use it when you are ghaira muta'akida, when you're not sure. Allah says, distance yourselves away from them. Maybe even Allah, who alaysa muta'akida, is not sure. If he was sure, he would say, fajitanibuhu litufrihuna. Leave them and you will be successful. But he is using al harufu taraji, harufu tamanna. He is not sure. Allah Hilwa. Jesus said, I am the truth. 
When someone says we are speaking the truth, we are talking about... No, that one is out of the vocabulary. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many things I read in the Quran because it was in Arabic language. Someone used to take advantage of me when God gave me the ability to start understanding the Arabic language. I used to ask myself, where are the things they used to tell me? For example, Allah begets not. Have you heard of that talk? Allah begets not. <laughs> when I ask a Muslim to come here and show me a verse in the Quran that says Allah begets not, you may sweat plasma. Because why? I depend on the language in which the Quran was written. Answer Allah the Quran Arabia. The Quran not just even in Arabic language. Is that how many? Five minutes. Oh, thank you very much. Not just in Arabic language. Here, Kitabun Arabia. It is an Arabic book. La yufham illa bi lughatul Arabia. You can never understand it except with Arabic language. And with Arabic language, whatever you're taught in English, most of them are not there. Allah has no son. And who told you? Here. Ah. At the end of it, we we'll chat with some people. You show me where the Quran says Allah begets not. He has <laughs> children, ladies and gentlemen, I will show you. He's a parent. Anyway. Get for me... Uh, uh, 28, Surah Al-Qasas, Ayat number 88. As we said, energy comes from food. 28, 88. The Quran says, You know, I was a proud Muslim. I never wanted to know and I did not care. Not knowing. Someone says, La Allah kumutufrihuna is gambling. Because the word La Allah is used in gambling. In gambling, you're not sure. It is a bet, isn't it? I support Arsenal, but these days I'm losing energy. Because when we, the match starts, I, uh, I am not sure whether we shall win or not. The disappointment comes after the 90 minutes. I don't, someone, I don't want someone to start coming here and gamble with my here after. This is a journey of no return. Ladies and gentlemen, you're seated here. The day you will be put in a casket there and we take you there and we bury you into the ground. You will never be seen anymore. And the wife you expect to marry underground, you will just dedicate only maggots. Because that is what is there. Read the verse of the Quran. 28 verse 88. Wait a minute, we are reading from the book called Quran, chapter number 28, Asura to Lukasas, the chapter of the stories. Verse number 88 is the last one. And invoke Wait a minute. Someone is going to write chapter number 15 and verses 99. It is also chapter number 15, Surah Al Hijri, Ayah, the last one, 99. Another person will write 50, verse 30. Chapter 50 and verse 30. I will read only those ones in the Quran, and my time, I believe, will be up. Read for me, my, my brother. 2888. Yes. And invoke not any other Ilah. And with Allah. La ilaha illa huwa. None has the right to be worshipped but he. Everything will perish except his face. Thank you. If you're here and you think the Allah of Arabia is God and that he is your savior, I'm, I bring you good news. That is not an eternal being. Ladies and gentlemen, before you take what your mother, your father, or your teacher taught you, there is a chance for you to meditate upon the truth. The Quran has said clearly and vividly that never invoke with Allah any other diet. La ilaha illa huwa, there is no God but He. Never be deceived. Ilaha means we want to be worshipped. It means God simply. The Quran denies the existence of God. La ilaha illa huwa. If an Arab man says Kulli shay in halikun does not mean things will die, he means everything will perish. The Quran is very strong on that. Mom. How many? One minute. One minute. One minute. Thank you. Kulli shay in halikun, everything is going to perish. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 3 and verses, uh, verses 16, that. 
for God so loved the world hata badala ibn ahlu wahid and he gave his only begotten son likai la yahlik that someone may not perish bal takunu la hayat al abadiyah but to be given eternal life the bible says la yahlik people will not perish the quran says kulli shay'in halikun illa wajhi llahi but the face of allah alone will remain oh god what will it be I want to thank God who faced, who saved me from a God who is going to perish and remains with a face only. I have the assurance Jesus will not perish and I, in his hand I am. Allah is going to okay, perish. Okay, that's the end. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen. I am going to come back. Hello. All right, without wasting any time, we have finished the lecture session. And I'm sure we all enjoyed the lecture from the Muslim speaker and the lecture from the Christian speaker on the topic the way of salvation. I myself I have learned a lot from both sides. I want to thank you the audience so far for good behavior but um, there is room for improvement please I am getting information from the technical crew that those people who are watching online we have a lot of people watching this program from all around the world it is streamed live and uh, we are hearing complaints that when there is um, murmuring in the hall that they cannot hear the audio well so yes it will echo into the into the uh, live stream and is disturbing the live stream so please you and i have the privilege to be here but there are some people who love to be here but they cannot come over here because they are in america they are in india they are in kanu they are in abuja they are in ghana kenya south africa watching this program so please when the speakers are speaking everybody should please be silent please when the speakers are speaking be very silent so that those people who are watching on live stream on facebook on youtube they will also benefit from the program thank you very much so we are going into the next item on the agenda which is the first rebuttal I want to remind you that rebuttal time is not a time for another lecture, but to attend to what the opposing speaker said. So, Sir Jamie, are you ready? So, I bring to you the Honorable Muslim Speaker. 15 minutes, timekeepers, are you ready? 15 minutes for the first rebuttal. Thank you very much. Please, audience, be very quiet because of the live streaming. Thank you. Yeah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. I take beer. We can now justify by ourselves and see things clearly all over the world. Now, this is a pity my brother from uh, Uganda has made a lot of insults on Allah and Muhammad, which is not today's topic anyway. But Allah has cautioned us not to do that in our own Quran. In Quran chapter 6, verse 108, Allah said, insult not what they worship, so that they will not pass that insult on Allah. So we will not insult your Jesus or anybody. It's not our deed. Now, my brother has said a lot of things, though he has used his time for rebuttal more than his topic. Because in rebuttal, when you are doing your topic, you don't quote what I said at all. You don't say anything of what I said. You need to deliver your own show, your topic, just simple and clear. Now, he said, he loved me for not insulting 
the Christians, I don't insult. No Muslim will insult anybody. Because we are being instructed in the Quran chapter 25, verse 26, that the servant of Allah that moves on on the surface of the earth will go on gently. When they meet anybody who is an arrogant, they will say, I'm here with peace. peace. So we are for peace. We don't insult. That's the Quran. My brother quoted Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. <laughs> well, read what is there. And Jesus came and spake unto them. I want to illustrate on that. He said, All power is given unto me in heaven and all in earth. All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Please, who gave him power? The most superior. He was given now. It's not his own power. He was given. So somebody gave him power. So he has, he's a powerless man then. And he has said it in John chapter 5 verse 30. You know, said, myself, by myself I, I can, can do, do nothing. nothing. So he's a powerless man. He said again that Jesus has, when he quoted Quran chapter 51 verse 23, please read for me. 53, 21. 53 verse 21. Say, the Lord. As also <laughs> in your own selves. Yeah. Will you not then see? 53, 20, 20, 51, 23. 51, 23. Okay. Yeah. Then. Yeah. By the Lord. God said by the Lord. Of heaven and of earth. Heaven. He now referred this Lord to be Jesus. The whole evangelist. Open Matthew 21, verse 11, verse 25. Matthew chapter 11 verse yes. 35. Who is the Lord of heaven and the earth? Is it Jesus? At that time, Jesus Look, answered Matthew and said. Matthew is talking now according to Matthew. Jesus said. At Matthew that time, 21 25. Matthew chapter 11 verse 25. Sorry, 20, 11 25. Uh -huh. At that time. At that time. Jesus answered. Jesus answered. And said. And said. I thank you. I thank you. Oh Father. Oh Father. Lord of heaven. Lord of heaven and, and earth. The earth. <laughs> How can you refer Jesus to the Lord in my Quran? When your Bible said Jesus said, God is the Lord of heaven and the earth. Let me add one again. Luke chapter 10, verse 21. In that Luke hour, 10, 21. In that hour, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in Jesus spirit rejoiced in himself and said and said i thank you i thank you oh father oh father lord of heaven and lord of earth. heaven and the earth so can you you can the bible jesus said god is the lord of heaven and the earth if i say no in my quran <laughs> jesus <laughs> i'm sorry it's a pity now is jesus even lord hmm. that's the question it's not to be on topic anyway because he has not dealt with topic at all but let me just rebut her on what he has said. He said, Jesus is Lord. No, he cannot be Lord now. If Jesus is Lord, is Jesus God? No, that's a question for him to answer. Is Jesus God? I'm sure he will say no. Because in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 22, verse 32, the Bible said, For who is God? Who is the Lord? If not the Lord. If not the Lord, who is God? Who can we address as God if not Lord? Ten more so minutes. if Jesus is Lord, then Jesus is your God. Ten more Who is more superior? God or Jesus? And meanwhile, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 28, Jesus said, My father, my father is greater than is me. Greater than I. So if Jesus is Lord, then Jesus is God. Who are we to believe? God or Father or Jesus? Wow. So confirm you is not Lord. Mark chapter 12, verse 29. One of the Pharisees came unto Jesus and asked him a question. From verse 28, okay. Okay. Time, time, time. time. Verse 29. 29. And Jesus, and Jesus, Jesus replied, He said, The first of all the commandments is, The first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. The Lord. The Lord. Our God. The Lord. Our God. Our God, including it Jesus, is one Lord. How can Jesus be Lord? I'm quoting the Bible, my brother. I'm quoting the Bible. My brother quoted Quran 33 verse 56. Where Allah saying, Allah, 
وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما is not twisting the arabic so i'm not here for that i'm not here for language now allah said i we send blessings although that's not to today's topic because of time let me just leave that it's not today's topic when time comes we'll deal on that i'll teach you what you don't know about that now he quoted Acts chapter 4 Acts chapter 4 verse 12 now I read. Yeah. Neither is there salvation in any other. I told you when I'm presenting my topic. I read one article that said the only place salvation is being propounded is in the New Testament. Now, the book, the one, the March Acts chapter four verse twelve was written by Luke, and in that write up he said Luke postulated the word salvation to Neither. the Christians. Now, he now quoted the same thing to portray my point. Neither. Eh? Eh? Is there salvation in any other? Say, is either any salvation in any other For name? For there is no other name under heaven given under among heaven. men. Which yeah, man can be saved? He must be saved. Eh? Verse 13. So that's Jesus. No, is that Jesus? Wow. It's a pity. Now, he said, Jesus, because of time, what? Time is too short for me, yes. man. Um, he quoted First John chapter five. It's not. It's not relevant. He quoted John chapter three, verse thirteen and thirty-six. John chapter three. And let me see what is there. Verse thirteen. That's no relevancy here. Okay. John three. And no man has ascended up to heaven. Hey, he said no man. As ascended down to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Now, my question is, where do we come from? Everyone here, where do we come from? Heaven or hell? He came from heaven now. You see, there's one Jesus, one thing Jesus said in the book of Mark, chapter chapter four, verse ten to twelve. Jesus said, "Reason I speak in parable." That they will see and they will not understand, lest they will not repent, lest they will not be saved. Hmm. No Christian can understand the Bible. I've been telling you this. It's a mystery unto them. Oku Mark chapter 10, chapter 4, verse 10 to 11. And when he was alone, when Jesus was alone, they that were about him, the disciples were with him. The twelve asked of him. The, the, the twelve, the twelve. As of the parable, and he said unto them, and Jesus said unto them, unto you it is given to know the unto mystery. Unto you, twelve, it is given to know the mystery it of the kingdom of God. It is given to know the mystery of, of God. The of twelve, God. but in Israel, but not unto the Christian. Them. You're just wasting your time. Eh? But unto them that but are un without unto you, unto them that are not Israelites, all like these you guys. Things, are All done in parables. Are done in parables. That sin they may see. Sin they may see. And not perceive. And they will not perceive. And hearing they may hear. Hearing they may hear. And not understand. They will not understand. Less. Less. At any time. At any time. They should be converted. Maybe they should be converted. And their sins should be forgiven. You are not good for forgiving for being a Christian. Five more minutes. So you think you cannot understand the Bible. Because you know it's not for you. So you are really wasting your time. Now he said, Jesus called God Father. <laughs> oh wow, Christian. You don't understand this simple logic. Jesus called Father. So what does that mean? Biological father? Who slept with his mother? You don't, you don't need the, the, you don't need the meaning of father. Okay, let me tell you, let me put you through. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 9. And Jesus said unto them, All Christians are sinners. You know? <laughs> Jesus said unto them, Jesus said unto them Call no man your father. Call no man father on earth. On earth. For one is your father. For one is your father. Which is in heaven. Now your papa is born, which is your column. Popsy. Pele. For you calling your father father on earth, you are a sinner. Because you don't understand. The word father does not mean father as he implies. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. Isaiah 64, 
verse 8. Yet, O oh Lord. Okay. Yeah, you know, yet, that Isaiah yet, 64, verse, verse 8. 8. Yet, O oh Lord. Yes, O oh Lord. Thou art our Father. Thou, you are our Father. We are the clay. We are the clay. And you are our potter. You are the mother. We are all the work of your hand. God, Father does not mean your Father. It means Creator. When, God, when Jesus said, Our Father was in heaven, our Creator, who is in heaven? Because you don't have. No, but look at Father. Simple thing. Oh, I don't know. Even he said, even in the Quran, Allah begets son. Wow. And also he could see. In my Quran, when in Quran chapter 1, 1, 2, verse 3 said, Lamu ye lidi, wa lamu yu ladi. I began not. No, no, was that, was that begotten? I don't have any parents, nor have any son or daughter. Hmm. Even he now said, he will show us tonight. Hmm. Where Quran said, he has a son. But unfortunately, he quoted Quran chapter 28. So, the course us, verse 88. And, Let me read. And call not. And call not. Besides Allah. Besides God. And another God. And another God. There is no God but there him. There is no God but Allah. Everything, Everything will perish. Will perish. Except his face. And you perish and die. Is there so him, is there is there the Perish and die. You will die, you perish. When you die, you, you perish now. You don't go. Now, let me go to. Yeah, he said, Jesus knew heaven. Hmm. Jesus knew heaven. heaven. He was now trying to refer to John chapter 14, verse 1 to 4. Where Jesus said, Don't be troubled. Believe in God and, and believe in me. In me. There are two different entities God and Jesus. Jesus. Believe in God and in me. For in my father's house, there are many mansions there. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare that was a place where for Jesus you. knew heaven. But unfortunately, I told you Christians don't understand their Bible. They can never understand it for life. It's not a cause. You can't. Now, if he knew heaven, he said, "Continue." And if I go and prepare a place if for you, if I go, I'll prepare a place for you. I will come again. I'll come again and receive you unto myself. He's not coming again. You have been deceived. That's where I am. He has gone. Amen. He has gone. Jesus has gone forever. He has gone. He died. Now, <laughs> now let me now go back to a response to this. You don't one know. Man you don't do not know heaven. Yeah, one minute. Okay. Mark chapter ten. You read yeah. at home. Mark ten, verse thirty-five to thirty-seven. They came unto Jesus. Give us heaven. You don't say no. 37, 37, 37, hello. 37, hello. Because of time. Oh. But Jesus said unto them, say, You do not know what you are seeking. You don't know. Are you able to drink from the cup I will drink Continue. from? Continue. Or to be baptized from the way I will baptize? That's yes. And they said, Yes, we are able. And Jesus said unto them, The cup that I will drink, you will drink. And the baptism. Yes. But to sit at my right to hand. To sit on my right in heaven. Or at my left. Or on my left in heaven. Is not mine to grant it. Is not my power to do that. But it is for those. For, for those. whom it has been prepared for. Those. Time up. Does he Time up. No. Time up. Time up. Two reporters in this, in this uh, program. Aso, water, 15 minutes, please. Thank you. Thank you, moderator, for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, I will ask, request the Muslim side to keep quiet because we are sharing ideas, right? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Miss the Muslim side. But I'm very sure these Muslims are going to disappoint you when I ask them the verse you told them in the Quran that brings salvation. They don't remember. If there is any Muslim person who can remember the verse given by the Muslim presenter from the Quran that leads to salvation, I'm giving you one minute for my time, you show it to us. So the topic of the day has been the way of salvation. But the presenter, from what I have heard, he has not presented.
that everything is going to perish and we shall remain with the first accident and only the first survived will you go and shake hands with the person will you thank you very much secondly i want to thank very much the presenter when i said allah swears by the lord of the heaven and the earth and that is jesus according to the bible he went to the bible to show me who the lord of heaven and the earth is and where he read jesus said i thank you father we want to know is that father allah if you're here you're a muslim and you believe that allah is father put up your hand aha uh -huh. you're disobeying allah and you know he's a master of punishment <laughs> number two the prophet said in the, in the quran it is written the prophet will say waqsul ya rabbi inna qawmi takhadhu hadha qur'ana majura the prophet will say that indeed allah inna qawmi my people the muslims takhadhu hadha qur'ana majura they made this quran something that is useless so the quran says allah has no son is not the father you've made it use allah is the father so thank you mr for exposing allah to us like that number two, something that is really very surprising is that a Muslim wants to come to the Bible and dictate to us what we should read and what we should not read. When we read Acts, he says, you should not read Acts because Acts was able to stand in his salah and you recite the word of the demons because they are demons that said, inna sami'ina qur'anan ajaba. Who said that? Demons. The Quran says, faqalu and the demons said, Inna sami'ina Qur'anan ajaba We the demons have heard the wonderful Qur'an You go to the mosque in prayer even in Taraweh like today You're going to recite the word of the demon And you're telling me, don't read Acts Ten minutes more Save me Secondly I, oh, Last time I was not answering you But now let me answer you in the ten minutes I have My friend said the salvation is only in the New Testament. You heard that. Yes. We gave you Isaiah chapter 49 and verses 6 where God says, My servant will take salvation to the end of the earth and this salvation is going to be eternal. Is that New Testament? No. Muslim, raise for me your hand. When Allah says, I'm going to ask my Muslim friends to keep quiet and respect the debate. Because my friend said you're good people. And now you're wasting the image that I had that Nigerians are good people. Maybe you came from Ghana. Uh, when Allah says the first Ali Ladina Yakra on Ali Kitaba, those who read the book, he would say, First Ali Ladina Yakraina Lukut First Ali Ladina Yakraun Al Kutub, those who read books. But Allah said a ah, book. In the book, he implied there is Taurat, there is Zabuli, there is Injiri, and other revelations according to 568. It is not only Zaburi, not Taurat only, and not Injiri only. Wama unzila ilaikum mi rabbikum and other revelations from your God. I want you to go and ask your Imam which book on earth is called a book, yet it means several books. And that is the Bible. So if Allah says first Ali Ladina Yakraun al Kitaba is asking you to go to those who read one book that contains many, and those are Christians, ladies and gentlemen, unless if you don't want to believe the truth. So Allah is sending you to a group that is ignorant. In other words, Allah is misleading you according to the honorable presenter. According to now the debate of the to Allah who is sending you to the Christians and the the honorable presenter calling the, the Christian is ignorant. Who should we trust? I think this one is more knowledgeable than Allah according to him. Number three. Jesus said that, uh, the man said that what shall I do to be saved? And Jesus said, pointed the man to the commandments and one God. <laughs> there is something that my friend who has the divine wisdom of the Bible <laughs> needs to understand. Only one thing for him to understand. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17 is very clear. Jesus says, I did not come to abolish the law or the teachings of the prophets. But, 
to make them come to to fulfill them if we can only understand the word to fulfill them then Luke chapter 24 verses 47 will make a lot of meaning and answer my friend Jesus came to fulfill the law the law that God Jesus was telling the man to go and uh, and follow to get eternal life Luke chapter 24 and verses 47 says the death of Jesus Christ on the cross fulfilled the law and the prophets and therefore people are supposed to be preached to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and their sins are forgiven. Amen. I wonder why they designed the divine revelation, the divine wisdom of the scriptures omitted that. Then my friend also said something that Jesus said, my father, my father, and he asks me, is Jesus God now? He asked me a question there, but that is not the topic of the day. You also testify with me. But I, give, I can give you a glimpse of it because he has asked. The next day we shall have a debate, maybe we debate whether Jesus is God. At least because that was my, uh, the, the favorite topic of a Muslim. I used also to enjoy it very much. Until when Jesus showed me the light. When you read the book of Revelation chapter 1 and verses 17. John testifies that when he saw Jesus. Five minutes more. Oh thank you very much. John testifies that when he saw Jesus. He fell at his feet like he had died. The Jesus he was with. He used to move with in Galilee and all Jerusalem and Israel. Walking with him, even at the Last Supper, John was with Jesus, looking at him like you're looking at me. But the Bible says when Jesus was glorified and he stepped into the glory that Muhammad knew not, when John looked at him, the power that came from Jesus struck John and John fell to the ground like he had died. That power is not power of any ordinary person, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says Jesus took on the form of a man. He took on, did you take on the form of a man? No, you were man. But next time we shall have a topic on the divinity of Jesus. I will give you more uh, about that. But today, let me save you and your people because it is not the topic of the day. And then, and then my friend asked me, he read chapter 3 and verses 85. That wamai yabu tazayla li islam adinan. I liked that verse and I believe there is someone who likes it because I'm, as I'm reading is also following. Wamai yabu tazayla li islam adinan. Fala yukbala minhu. Now this is something you need to understand. With this one I'm going to be very slow. They said whoever seeks any religion other than Islam, we begin to ask ourselves, what is a religion? According to Arabic language, if you know even a little of Arabic language, the word religion does not mean faith. Never. It comes from Arabic word dain that means a debt. You agree with me apart from a few who don't know Arabic may argue. It comes from the Arabic word that is daini. When you read Surah Al-Fatiha, the Quran says Maliki Yawmi Dini. Is that religion? A translation is the ruler of the judgment day. Your dini, Quran is saying, is judgment. According to the Bible, when you read John chapter 3 verse 16 in Arabic language, beginning from verse 17, he says, Lamu yuru sira rabbu li ilahi ibnahu fil alami li yadini li alami. He did not send his son into the world. Li yadini li alami to condemn the world. Walakin li yakhulisu li alami. But to save the world. And the Bible says, Hadhi hiya dayinuna. And this is the condemnation. Alladhi huwa alladhi yu'minu bihi. The one who believes in Jesus. La yudanu. Waladhi la yu'minu mithula anta. The one who doesn't believe like you. Kadidini is already condemned. So your religion is condemnation. When I come to 3685. It says. Whoever seeks a condemnation that is not Islam. I, that is not Islam. I cannot be in a condemnation. I have to leave it and believe Jesus Christ my Lord. 
So I throw it away. The other thing is that Islam brings the people from darkness to light. Oh, really? <laughs> Open for me chapter 2 verses, uh, verse 16. Chapter 2 of the Quran, verse 15. Chapter 2 verse? Verse 16. Verse 16. A surah to Baqarah. The word is surah means the, uh, uh, the picture, isn't it? So we are in the picture of a cow. <laughs> I used to read these things and I used to love them so much until when Jesus uh, opened my eyes. Verse 17. One minute more. What do you thank you very much. Let us read only that one. Verse 17. Chapter 2, verse 17. Their likeness is as the likeness of one who kindled a fire. Mm -hmm. Then, mm -hmm. when it lighted all around him, mm -hmm. Allah took away their light hey. and left them in darkness Allah is so living. they could not see. Allah is leaving people in darkness and for you are deceiving us that it brings light. Ah, are you better than Allah? You just think this thing in Tarawah. Mathalahum ka mathali ladhi stawqada nara falamma azaat ma hawlahu zahab allahu bin nurihim wa tarakuhum fi zulmati la yubsirun and you bend over. Before you bend over, Allah is leaving people in darkness. The Bible says Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. Allah is leaving people the, in darkness. The time is over. Thank you. Um, I've ended with this one. The Quran says Muslims are dead already. You need Jesus to give you life. Amen. Thank you very much. Quickly, 10 minutes, reporter. Second reporter for the Muslim speaker. Ten minutes, rebuttal, second rebuttal. Thank you. All right, I'm inviting the Muslim speaker for ten minutes, second rebuttal. Thank you very much. Now, my brother, don't even listen to my lecture at all. It's a pity, it's a pity, it's a pity. I'll point out, I'll, I'll wind on the points now. Why you say, eh, eh, eh. I said the word father, according to the Bible, means creator. I go to Isaiah chapter 64, verse 36, verse 4. That the word father means creator. So Allah is not father. That's why I said, raise up your eyes. Raise eyes. I mean creator, not father. When I mention father, I mean creator in the Bible. You now say Allah begets son, father. Allah is not father, he's a creator. According to Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. Now, he said in the Quran, there are some things that interest me. When he was delivering his lecture, he quoted Quran chapter 10, verse 94. Such interesting chapter. And I'll be, I'll be telling the old Christian, you are deceiving yourself. When Allah referred to Kitabu, no Bible, no Bible at all. A question, a question. Go that pray for me, Quran chapter 10, verse 94. God said, go and, go and, read, go and ask those. Who read the book? The book? Go and refer to the Jews uh -huh. and the Nazarene so, that lives in Medina. The Quran says, uh -huh. So, if you are in doubt yeah. about that wish we have revealed to you, yeah. then ask those who have been reading the scripture. Now, you know, you. Said, we should ask our scholars which scripture Allah refers to. Allah refers to the Jews' book, not Bible. Now, if it is Bible, my brother, is it King James Version or the Standard Version or Good News? Because I have two Bible here. This is the Revised Standard Version. Ah, I cannot be able to I will show you. There is no Let's go there. This is the Revised Standard Version of the Bible. It is quite different from this very one. This is 1891 edition. This is 923 edition. It's not the same thing. If you want to quote me wrong, open your Bible to Acts chapter 16. Acts Sorry, chap Mark chapter 16, verse 9 to 20. It's not here in the Bible. It's not in this Bible. But you can find that in this Bible, the same verse standard. Likewise, John chapter 8, verse 1 to 11 is not in this Bible. You can come and confirm it. 
But you can confirm that in this Bible. But it's in here in the good news. In your good news and reverse this uh, King James Version. Likewise, the good news Bible. And there's an omission in this Bible. Then which one Allah is referring to? Is it this or this or this? That's not a, that's not a topic anyway. We we'll take that for a topic. Now, he quoted Isaiah 49 verse 6. That I don't even talk about it at all. That was a salvation. Huh, let's read now. Verse 6. Yeah. And he said, And God said to Isaiah, It is a light thing. It is a light thing. It's a light thing. Yeah. That thou shouldest be my servant to that rise up. You should me. show. You must show my servant. To raise up the Isaiah tribes of Jacob. show my servant. The what? To raise up the tribes of Jacob. To raise the tribe of Jacob. And to restore the preserved of and Israel. And to restore the preservation of Israel. I will also give you for a light to the Gentiles. What are we saying? I don't know. He quoted Matthew. I, yeah. Me, I quoted Matthew chapter 19. Verse 20. 20, 16 to 26. Yes. I now said, he said, how can I be perfect? The question was, who can then be saved? That's why I paused. I know we refer to that. I paused. Who can then be saved? saved. Open the book of Mark. Give me that iPad. Because of time. Mark. In the book of Mark chapter 12, Mark chapter 12. Just leave, 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 me, leave me alone. I've run to 30. 30 now. And thou shalt love the Lord your heart and blah, blah, blah. In verse 31. The second is because somebody came to Jesus to ask a question. In Mark chapter 12 from verse 28 downward. The question 29 is, he said, which of the commandments of God is the most greatest? He now said, hear O Israel, the Lord, our God is only one Lord. Not two, not Jesus. You don't say the Lord, our God is only one Lord. You know, said in verse 30, thou shalt love the Lord God with your heart, with your soul, and blah blah blah. Fuck money. The second one is this five more minutes. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor of yourself. No command is greater than these two. But I too, and this clear said unto him, Well, master, you have spoken the truth. There's no God but one, and there's no other but he. La ila ilo law. That's the meaning. And to love your neighbor, to, to, to love your God, to add all the same and to blah, blah, blah. He now said, it's more better than all bond sacrifice. Look at that statement. It's more better to love your neighbor, to keep God's commandment, is better than sacrificial lamp of Jesus. According to this statement. He said, it's better than all sacrificial acts. He now said in verse 34, you now saw how he answered strictly. He now said unto the man, you are not far from internal life. Not waiting for his blood though. You are not far. But what kept him not to be far? Let's back, go back to Matthew 19. So that 26 again. He said, 25, Disciples said, who can then be saved? Look at Jesus said in verse 26. Jesus said, Jesus beheld them. He said unto them, with men, this is impossible. So Jesus cannot determine who will be saved. But, he said, he, said, he answered them. What will you want me to do for what you? What do you want? They said unto him, uh -huh. grant unto us that we may sit one on the right hand and the other one at the left side. But Jesus said unto them, Jesus said unto them, You do not know what you are asking for. You don't know what to ask you for. Can you for me to give you salvation, you are deceiving yourself. Can you I cannot save you. There is no salvation in my possession. Uh -huh. Can you drink from the cup of the drink that Can I drink Can you drink, drink from the cup I am about to drink now? And be baptized uh -huh. with the baptism that I am baptizing with. Yeah. And they said unto yeah, him, Saturn. We can. We can and Jesus said unto them, yeah. You shall indeed drink from my cup and drink. drink. And you shall baptize him from the baptism that I will baptize with. But to sit on the right but hand. To sit on the right hand. That was Samuel does not lie with Jesus. So you have been deceived. Jesus said to sit on my right. And on my left hand. And side. on my left hand. 
It is it in that kingdom. In that heaven, it is not for me to give it, it is out. not for Jesus to give it out. But it shall be given to them. For what do you expect you to for? say again? What do you expect you to say? He had defended himself. I'm not your salvation. You now quote Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. Revelation. Common dream. Bad dream. The man that dreamed it was not known in the Bible. It was not John, no. Because the letter of John was not known. Revelation 1 verse 17 as, a, as an evidence. One no, no, no. more minute. Hey, just one, Abi. He told about religion. Hmm. Allah said in Quran 3 verse 19. In the din, in the law, al Islam. And the only acceptable religion from Allah is, that, is, is an, Islam. It's an Abi scholar. Uh, in the dinner, in, in the, the life, Ali Islam. Salam alaikum. It will be higher if Allah wishes you any good on earth. You fakihu who fidin, he gives you the knowledge of the of the deen, of the religion. I think according to how my friend has presented chapter 10 verses 94, for sure and indeed agree with me, Allah doesn't love him. He did not give him the religion, the religious knowledge. Why? I am going to qualify my statement as someone who studied Islam, as someone who knows Arabic language. And those who studied Islam and they know Arabic language, you're going to support me and you'll get saved. Number one, in Arabic language or in the world before we go to Arabic language, there is a book, only one book on earth, that when you say that book, you mean many books and that is the Bible. The Bible means the collection of books. You cannot argue with that. Anyway, you can argue because the Quran says, "Odo ila sabili rabbika bili hikma." Call people to, to the way of your Lord with wisdom. Wal ma'ida til hasan. Wajadiluhum. The word wajadiluhum and argue with them. Sometimes people come to argue because the Quran says, "Wajadiluhum bilati hiya hasan." And argue with them. So please, at least disobey the Quran in this only one aspect and don't argue with us. There is only one book on earth that when you say it means many books. The Bible, the word Bible means the collection of books. Simple as that. When you say book, you mean many. According to the Quran, this is what it says. First, alilathina yakra'una likitaba. Those who read the book, not books. Remember the Jews had a book called the Taurat. My friend said they were referring to the, to the, to the scholars who were the Jews at that time. But the question is about the Christians who were carrying the Injil. How about those who were reading the Zabul? How about those who were reading other revelation? Because the Quran is 568 says, In addition to the Taurat, Zabul, Wali Injil, Wama unzira ilaikum mirabikum and all other revelations from your God. How about them? My friend is excluding others, he's only concentrating on Taurat. He's living out Allah's books. That is why I'm saying Allah doesn't love him because the man you read Allah the one Allah loves, you fucking who he gives you the religious knowledge. My friend, Allah doesn't love him. Number two, my friend say was so much insisting on this point that salvation starts in the New Testament. We should not read Luke's things. We should not read Paul's things. But remember, you read the words of the bird. You read the words of the auntie. And that insect called about its fellow insects to gather. You read those words. And you pray through them, yet you are not an insect. The Quran says in Surah in Namuri, the chapter for the ants, for the insects. And the insect said, Ya Ayoha Namuri, oh, fellow insects. We find you in the mosque reading those things. Are you insects? 
But you deny us to read what Luke wrote. We have evidence. Luke was filled with the Holy Spirit. And according to the Quran, Quran says chapter 46 and verse, verse 29. He says, "Idi swarafuna ilaika na farun min al jinni." Oh Muhammad, remember when we sent you a group of demons? Muhammad was sent a group of demons. You want us to believe Muhammad? Yet in the hadith, Muhammad testified that he had a shaitan which was a Muslim. Kar Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, li kulli ibn Adam upon every son of Adam, wuli da bi shaitan is born with the devil, and. Aisha asked him wa anta rasulillahi and he said naam wa ana indi shaitani wa lakini saadani lahi Allah helped me wa aslama shaitani and my shaitani embraced Islam a prophet who had a devil that was a, a believing a Muslim devil you want us to believe that one and we reject Paul who was filled with the spirit of God and wisdom five minutes more five minutes five minutes hey, thank you very much <laughs> when I see a Muslim despising Paul, number one, either is not educated in Islam, number two, he just loves Islam and hates the Bible, but the Quran approves Paul that is a man of God. <laughs> this one it is a very new thing to him. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to read for you the book of the book of the Quran, chapter 15 and verses 99. Muhammad is commanded that wa'budu rabbaka hatta ya'ati yakal yakin and this is how it says muslim wa'budu rabbaka oh muhammad worship your lord muhammad was commanded to worship your lord his lord like the way you do people to be a muslim to get wudu rinse in the mouth and in the nose and not to allow shaitan to sleep in his nose everything the quran says hatta it is bound by it is put in time boundaries Hatta until so it is not forever to be a Muslim. It is a hatta. It has an expiry date. Hatta until ya ati yakal yakin when the truth comes to you. Muhammad was commanded to be a Muslim until the day he will know the truth. When they get to people who don't understand Arabic, they tell them until when you die. Al yakin doesn't mean death. Never. It will never mean and it has never meant. Al yakin means the truth, certainty. Muhammad was not certain about what he was believing. That is why he says in chapter 20, 72, the chapter for the demon is the Surah al Jinni, verse 21. Muhammad says, Kul, kul inni la amli kula wa la rashada. I don't have the ability to harm you, not even to show you the right path. Muhammad had no ability to harm you, and he did not have ability to show you that this is the right path. So what he showed you here in the Quran was not the right path. That is why you're supposed to ask Allah, show us the right path. For me, I cannot ask God that because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> Jesus died. Three days he was in the grave like any other person. My grandfather died, he was in the grave. Jesus, three days he was like that. But on the third day, even the grave knew this is the Lord, the Master. We cannot hold him anymore. We cannot handle him. And the grave had to vomit him and salute the Master. And up to right now, the grave of Jesus Christ is empty and it shall be forever empty. I have a book called Asira to Nabawiya. I loved the prophet so much. Then I found a death announcement in the Asira to Nabawiya about Muhammad. Uh, a man called Abu Bakr stood before the Muslims like you who loved Muhammad like you do love him. And he gave them sad news and told them, Ya ayyuhal muslimun, in ka e a kullu man ladhi ya'budu Muhammad, inna Muhammad kadmata. If you have been worshipping Muhammad, Muhammad is already gone. He's no more. In Luganda we used to have a song in our, in our country, Uganda. It, we used to sing it in Luganda. So if I sing it, you will not understand. Yeah, I will sing and translate it. To Sunday, Sente, Sente, Nya, 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 To Gende, Madina, To Rave, Nabi, Weyagwa. Then let us collect money slowly by slowly until we go to Mek, Madina, and we see where the prophet fell. He fell and he never came up. But Jesus, he fell to the ground three days and he was walking on the streets. And then people tried to fight the resurrection. That is why this man is fighting Jesus being God. And he's... 
trying to mix the topics. That one is coming anytime. I will show you that Jesus is God and Allah salutes him and Muhammad knows Jesus is God. That one for the next time we are coming back with him. Oh, one minute more. Oh, thank you very much. Salvation according to the presentation is only in the name of Jesus Christ. According to the Muslim side, which verse did they give us where salvation is? Maybe Bakara chapter, the Bakara verse 1. Alif Lam Mim. You don't understand it like I don't. You don't. You don't. You are going to sing these things in Tarawah. But first get the meaning now. Oh Muhammad, worship your Lord until the day you will know the truth. When I knew the truth, it was not supposed. I am a pharmacist. I told you when a drug is expired, we, we dispose of an incinerate. Islam got the expired with the coming up. of the truth and Thank now you. I'm born again in Jesus' name. Okay, without... Okay, without much ado, we are going to the next session, which is cross-examination. Um, the program says three questions, but I'm informed that we want to reduce it to... Okay, just one question. One. Don't worry, one question, then I can't. Okay, um, ready? Evangelist, you have to be ready because the cross examination is going to be only one question. So you settle down and package your only question. And you have only one minute to ask your question. Timekeepers, be attentive. Once it is one minute, whatever you are explaining, it will be cut off and then. He will answer you the way he can. The Muslim speaker, get ready. You have three minutes to ask your to answer the question. So, um, Hello. Now. No, no, okay, you will ask first. And I will talk last. Okay, now. wait. Wait, 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 wait. All right. Ask your question. Now. Thank on our topic. Ask. The topic is way to salvation. And you said a lot when I was reading my lectures. Evangelism will say a lot as well. But my question is. In your statement, you said Allah is not God. Although that's not the topic anyway. That's not the topic. So I don't want to go into that. The word salvation there, how does it come? How, how can we get saved? By Jesus. Says Jesus. That's my question. Thank you very much. I hope I've understood you very well. The question is, how can we be, get saved by Jesus? According to, uh, according to what he said, how can we be saved from his word? Thank you very much. Uh, the book of, Ark, of Luke. Thank you. The book of Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. I'll begin the, from there. I'll give you only two scriptures. Luke chapter 10. You're opening for me Matthew chapter 26. Luke chapter 10. Jesus says this about salvation. And this is uh, chapter 10 verse, sorry, chapter 19 verse 10. I'm sorry about that. 
Luke chapter 19 and verses 10. This is what it says. Jesus says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. That is the Lord. What, that is what Jesus came to do. Then when we go to Matthew chapter 26, this is how salvation is administered according to Jesus' mouth. Uh, Luke chap Matthew chapter 26 and verses 28. Uh, that will begin from 27. He says, And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God, and he gave it to them, and he said, Each one of you should drink. This is one my blood. Minute. Thank you. This is my blood of the covenant between God and his people. It is poured as a sacrifice to forgive sins. Luke chapter 26 and verses, 40, sorry, Luke chapter 24 and verses 47, Jesus said, uh, let me reach there very fast. I'm sorry, my thing is going. He said, and these are the things that I told you while I was still with you, that it is it, all things must be fulfilled, for it is written in the laws and the prophets that Christ must suffer and on the third day will resurrect, and all people should be preached to the gospel of salvation and their sins be forgiven. That is Jesus Christ the Lord. I ask my question. Thank you very much. Since we are on the topic of salvation, I want you to help me with three things. Number one is grace. Number two is mercy. And number three is justice. Three of them. Justice demands that what has been done gets a penalty that is equal. Mercy forgives. And grace gives more than what a person deserves. Now, if Allah forgives your sins, how does he administer justice? Because for us, our justice was administered in Christ and God forgave us. Our sins were paid for. If you wrong Allah, he is supposed to forgive you. How does he reconcile forgiveness and justice that your sins are paid for equally and he has forgiven you? If he forgives you and he, uh, he does not pay justice, that means he's unjust. And he just, if he, he does not forgive you and punishes you, then he is not merciful. So how do the two reconcile in him? For us, it reconciles in Christ. To God, maybe I don't understand your question. To God, I don't understand. Let me reread for you. How does grace, justice, and mercy of Allah reconcile? Okay, with what? How do you have Allah? Wait let, a minute. Let, 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 me, let, let me rephrase for you the question. Okay. How does it come that in Allah, justice is satisfied uh -huh. and mercy is also satisfied uh -huh. and grace is administered? Grace is administered. I don't understand his question. Okay, okay let, me, let, let me answer you. Let me ask, ask another one. Let me ask you. another one because you've because not understood. You are, you are asking me that question based on being a Christian your faith. No, I'm asking you a question. Because you don't believe in grace. Grace comes from Paul, not Jesus. Jesus said, if you want to get a life, go and keep the laws of God. He has never said grace. So I don't understand the word grace in the air. And in Quran, Quran 25, verse 71, Allah said to Muhammad, and Quran chapter 6, verse 54, 71 says, whoever repents and does good, has truly turned to Allah in repentance. Those who witness no falsehood, that's for 72 now, and if they pass through futility, they pass by it with honorable, with honorable. Now, in Quran chapter 6, verse 54, Allah said, Quran 6, verse 54. Quran chapter 6, verse 54. Verse 54. Since 54. Yeah, time to Lord. One more minute. No, this is not six. Since 64. Allah said, Allah said, and when those, and when those who believe in our verse, it says, no. Okay. 
busy unto you. The Lord, your Lord has decreed to himself a decree that anyone who does wrong out of ignorance and then repents after that and correct himself, indeed, Allah is all forgiven and merciful. Uh, we are sorry the time is fast spent. We would have loved people to ask so many questions. I know a lot of people have questions, but um, we are constrained to have only one question to the Muslim speaker and one question to the Christian speaker. Hello. So, who has a question for the Christian speaker. Okay, Aladi Jomo will have a question. Eh? Okay, you. Okay, I'm sorry. Who is asking a question to the Muslim speaker? And then we have one person who is asking a question to the Christian speaker. So, first of all, you ask your question to the Muslim speaker. I'm the moderator here, please. You have to be. No, no, no. relax. So, you, you have only, listen to me. The. There's no justice there. Now, like I'm older than you, I'm your senior. I'm your senior. I'm your senior. You are not yet 50 years old. All right, all right, all right. Ask, ask your question. Give him. Let him ask. Labaika, I'm 50 years old. You are not yet 50 years old. Why, why are you behaving like this? Hello, assalamu alaikum. When my son was talking. We'll discuss with him later. I've, I've gone to your country before. I've gone to your country before. I have gone to your country before. Next time we'll talk about that, inshallah. So my question is, when you first open your speech, you said, and Jesus died. And Jesus died. That's our first speech. I want to ask you, where is this stated? Where is this stated categorically in the Bible that and Jesus died? Because the second thing you said was, and he looked like Jesus, you, and the Bible, who is a liar. Because Jesus said, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a fish, so shall I be in the heart of the earth. How many days was Jonah in the belly of a fish? Three days. Was he dead or alive? Tell us. When Jesus was in the heart of the earth, was he dead or alive? Tell us. Was he praying or not? Tell us. And was it three days and three nights? Count it for us. Thank you very much, my son. Count the three days and three nights for us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My friend is asking me that uh, Jesus said as Jonah was in the belly of the fish, so he will be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Thank you. Jesus said as. He did not say just exactly like Jonah. Wait a minute. I'm adding you. Just, he did not say that just exactly like Jonah. Why? When Jesus was going to enter the heart of the earth, he first talked about himself shedding blood. Did Jonah shed blood? 
So that one kicks out the concept of just like Jonah because he could not he did not do it exactly just like Jonah. The concept it is about spending not the same state. Mark me very well. If he did not talk about the shedding of blood, maybe he would be like Jonah. Jonah didn't shed blood. Jonah just entered there. Jesus first shed his blood. And there is confirmation from his mouth. They said you were a reverend father. You must have read these things very well. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 21. Jesus categorically told his disciples, just as you studied about them, that I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I will be handed over to the high priests and the scribes. I will be killed. You remember that? And I will, after three days, I will resurrect from the dead. I believe you remember that very well. That is why he spent there three days. After the, on the third day, he said, on the third day, he will resurrect. But he talked about his death, and it happened. Not like Jonah, because Jonah did not shed any blood, and Jonah was not a savior of anyone. But he, remo he shed his blood, Jesus, and saved his people. Thank you very much. Yeah, my ustas, um, oh my sheikh, doctor of the Bible. Did I get you right? Yes. So, so this is my question. This is an Arabic Quran, like purely Arabic. I want you to show us the word internal life in this Arabic Quran or in any Arabic Quran. The word, not the concept, the word internal life in the Arabic Quran. Thank you. Now, the question is, the word in, okay. Internal life is an English word, not Arabic word. So I cannot show internal life as Arabic word in English language. So it's not possible now. What are you saying? Now, I have three minutes. That's a question now. It's not there. So don't waste my time. That's a question. It's not there. So no. you agree that it's not there? What? Someone is asking me an English language is Arabic. I didn't say, show me the English Quran. I'll show you everlasting. Everlasting is in their Quran. I'm going to say, tell me, Arabic. Arabic to English. How is that possible? Now, you are not Now, I have two minutes more. Ah. When my brother was talking, he quoted, he said, he quoted Matthew 26, verse 28. That Jesus uses bread to uh, to satisfy his um, to represent his blood. No, that's not the meaning. If you get home as a Christian, go and read the meaning of Matthew 28, verse 26, in John chapter 6, from verse 54 to, 50, to 63. Jesus has explained the word blood. The blood does not mean the blood is shed. Jesus never shed blood to, for anybody. In Mark chapter 1, verse 38, Jesus said, this, The reason why I came to the world is to preach, not to die. Nowhere in the Bible, Jesus said, I've come to die for your sin. Nowhere in the Bible. Where he said, My mission of going is to die for your sin. Mark chapter 1, verse 38, read at home. And Luke chapter 4, verse 3, Jesus said, Let us go on to the next town also, that I may preach there, because that is why time I up, was sent. Time up. Time up. Thank you very much. Okay, I want to thank I want to thank all of you very much. Thank you very much. I'm the senior man in the house. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, Reverend David Adeshino, please come and lead the closing prayer. Come and lead the closing prayer on behalf of the Christians. Hello, please. I'm presenting my evangelist Umar Mustafa from Uganda. 
the book of mine written by me. One is Eden for Pakistan and Islam and read your Bible. That's what it gives for you. Likewise, your second, uh, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Joseph, Mr. Joseph, I'm presenting you this. Thank you. Uh, we are friends. We are no enemy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, he also has a gift for me. You can share all to others. I think it's one man there. Uh, uh, okay, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. No, 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 no. It's being recorded. Uh, amen. Let us. Yes, I also want to present him my book that uh, says that Allah of the Quran, the one we have been talking about, okay. is very different from the God who is in the Bible. Okay. And Prophet Isa of Islam, the one who did not die on the cross, okay. the one who escaped death, okay. is not the Jesus Christ whose mission came to die for people's sins. Okay. And in it there is the Arabic word of eternal life called Al-Hayatul Abadiyya in the Arabic Bible, okay. which is very absent in the Quran. Okay. Thank you very much. No, even those ones. Okay, okay. All those ones are contents. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you will speak to Brother Isanga. Let's have the closing prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for what you have done in this meeting. We thank you especially for the two of your sons because these ones that came from Uganda has talked to us. Your son in Nigeria has also talked to us. But we commit all we have had. Your, 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 your slave. Uh, we pray that you will turn him to be your son very soon in the name of Jesus. And we are saying today that all that we have had here today will not be against us at the end in the name of Jesus. God Almighty will move in our midst and expose the truth to all of us both the Muslims and the Christian, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you because we know you have had us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We thank Allah for making it possible for us to be here up to this moment. It has been read from a book that has a name from the back called the Quran, and the Quran is found inside. Other conditions came from a book that have a name Bible, and the Bible is not found inside. Go and think about that yourself, and believe that God will give us a life to see ourselves from now, until any other time my son when you are going back give me your number we'll still invite you to nigeria we can't go to your country easily now because your system there is no right for now for us to come but we'll come so we have to do that god will keep you alive to see many years and this my friend addition who run away from me will also be alive so yes we we shall all enjoy the heaven of god when we as he said to ourselves let us not be evil doers let us run away from evil, and God will save all of us. In Allah's name I pray, Allah accept our prayer in this world and the hereafter. Thank you so very much. We thank all of you for coming. Yes, yes. Yeah. We thank all the Muslims for coming, and uh, the Christians who are the hosts. We believe that more of this thing will be coming up very soon. God bless all of you. We now take a group photograph. Come around. Thank you.